Azra. Hey there folks, how's everyone doing? And welcome to Warzone 2.0's much anticipated DMZ mode. Now I say much anticipated because people are thinking this was going to be like a Tarkov, escape from Tarkov type mode, but uh, not as complicated as Tarkov. But unfortunately it isn't, and it's neither a good PvE mode nor a good PvP mode. Uh, the best way to describe it is it's lackluster, and I'll tell you more as we go along. The game mode is not finished. First of all, it's super buggy, and for the first time ever in a recording of mine, the audio got corrupted. So that's why there's no game audio, and I'm having to voice over this. Uh, so it's not. It was in a fun time, as you can tell. Uh, there's so much lag in looting, and it, there's lag in like killing AI. And also not like lag. It's like server ping kind of lag. It's just there. It's just a delay. It's just there, like, no matter your ping, the delay is there. Like, I've seen also a lot of other people mention this delay, it's also in the BR mode. And overall, the, the reaction to Warzone 2.0, what from what I have seen, is not that good. Most people, even if people are liking the BR mode, most people are not liking this uh, DMZ mode. They're just saying it's a glorified uh, Spec Ops mode, and I agree with that. It is basically spec ops but on a bigger map and with like a couple of other real people that you might not even come across when you're playing. It, it's like, what's the point other than to just level up guns? Now I would like to talk a bit about the AI in this mode since, uh, act, since Infinity War were like pretty proud of their AI. The AI is not good. First of all, when you start out, the AI is pretty dumb and it still takes quite a few bullets to kill them which is not something good. It's pretty dumb. They don't see you even when you're right in their face and but sometimes they just spot you from like 500 meters away when you have made no noise. They will just spot you out of nowhere. Like AI bots that have shotguns try to shoot you from the furthest distance away bots that have like sniper rifles don't try to shoot you when they're far away but the ones that have shotguns will try to shoot you with a shotgun even though it's not gonna hit you i don't know why that they do that it's that's definitely a bug all of the bots have uh, aimbot and that's pretty obvious it's not crazy at the start but as the match progresses and you will see it in here too the aimbot gets cranked up to like 5000 and it gets at that point it's just insane because they start seeing you through walls they get super high alert or something and right here you can see if you start killing bots in a certain area if you clear out a zone they bring in reinforcements through those choppers and they start throwing smokes now these smokes are so fucking awful i can't tell you they throw so many smokes that it starts to fucking lag your computer your system your console whatever it is will actually start to lag you and these reinforcements get tougher and tougher like they have more armor they start throwing more lethals flashbangs stuns you name it they also have this train in here that has good loot just like the train in warzone and that's your main goal to get good loot just to like so that your next run is better so you drop in get good gear secure the good gear and exfil with it that your next run gets easier and you keep doing that but here's the thing they butchered that what you need like the cash that you get is completely useless the items that you uh, exfil with are useless like there's no stash in like the main lobby so most of the stuff that uh, you see in game that has high value when you sell it is uh, useless out of the game like once you get out exfil with it it's no use you need to sell it in game and then take the cash and get out and even that cash has no use outside of the buy stations in the match it's all in the game so why the hell would anyone go around and loot like why would i go to a buy station to buy a, a self revive when there's so many just around in boxes and crates i don't get it 
uh, here's a good example of those bugs that I mentioned. You see here that I can revive someone. Why? How? I'm solo queued. How can I revive someone? How is that possible? Why does it say that? That is very distracting. That shouldn't be a thing. Like, look at this clip from one of my previous games. Yeah, it's a funny bug of the bots like floating in the sky, but it also shows that the game is very much incomplete. It's in beta, so I'm hoping that they improve a lot of this stuff. The footsteps are super loud, even for the AI, and you can hear them from pretty far away. Gunshots? You can hear them from like over 100 meters away. Someone is fighting on the other side of the map. You can hear it and you know to like avoid that zone. And also you can see what this is what happens when you get like surrounded by uh, bots that have good armor. Like I don't know how I got out of this situation but it was pretty close to dying. These guys love spamming nades to get you out of your like your cover spots. So what you see here is called a stronghold key. Strongholds are points on the map that hold much more valuable loot but are also much more fortified by tougher bots. And yeah, the 7 to 5 is still busted. <laughs> that won't change. When the AI is by itself, it's not good at sensing you. So you can sneak up on them like this and execute them. Because when you execute them, you don't have to worry about armor, you can just get a kill. So instead of going in guns blasting, you can quietly sneak up on them like you're playing a stealth action shooter and then just take them out silently. Only works if there's one or two though, so... These are the places that require you to use special keys to open them as you know to get like slightly better loot but it's also as you might have guessed heavily fortified inside and they know you're outside because they start shooting throwing nades throwing smokes while they're inside even though they can't see you and it's just it's just a weird experience it's just this it's like the AI is in its infancy This is a UAV tower that which you can activate to ping not only just nearby bots but also real people around you. There's also real UAVs available from shops and from certain high rarity crates. 
but these are just kind of helpful because they're free. Okay, so it's finally time to hit up a stronghold with the key that we got. So you can't hear the in-game audio, but as soon as I walked up to the door, they instantly knew I was outside and started yelling, throwing shit, preparing themselves and all that. And, and it's pretty uh, messed up inside because they use riot shields. Yes, the AI uses riot shields. You thought it couldn't get worse? It does. They use riot shields and they use deagles. So if they hit you, you're dead. I got lucky because this particular bot was pretty dumb and didn't crouch uh, the moment it saw me, so I shot it in the feet. Also, you can see these weird visual bugs when I uh, shoot my shotgun, when I throw my termite. I don't know what's up with those. I. It just shows up. It's a buggy mess. What can I say? And these are White Lotus Intel that you can only get from Strongholds. And you need them for a couple of missions. Next up on the list are Contracts. This mode has a quite a bit of variety of contracts like take this cargo to this place, secure uh, nuclear materials, secure the hostage, secure intel, blah 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 blah. You get the point. I chose the secure intel contract here because it's the most boring one in my opinion and I will show you how dark shit it is. If you're solo queuing, you'll notice that the contracts aren't tailored to like solo play. They really want you to like uh, queue up in trios and do the contracts in squads. Because if you're in a squad, the contracts are get like infinitely much more easier to do because of the backup that you have. And this mode feels much like better suited to solo plays so that's like a bit weird to me over here they want you to find a laptop in a specific building that isn't marked by the way it's not marked on the map it's got no icon it's just hey go find this laptop it could be anywhere in this area do you know how big the fucking map is then they tell you to go to another spot and upload the data and just wait there do nothing just upload the data and wait there's no threats, no risks whatsoever. The secure the hostage contract I would say is the hardest one so far. Cause if you're, if you're by yourself, cause as soon as you get to the location of the hostage, they put a bomb on him and start a timer. And then they throw you all these bullet sponges at you and tell them to kill them and save the hostage. So you are quite in a pinch. Over here you can see some high octane thrilling gameplay of me climbing this fucking tower that is 200 feet tall and you can see the aim boss down there are trying their best to kill me but because I'm not standing still they're having a difficult time. After I was done with a boring ass contract I tried to pick one up that was more enjoyable to do which is a deliver cargo one. Now there's two of these, one's for water and now one's for land. Water one uses the ship, uh, the land one uses the armored vehicle. The water one is much worse because the waterways in this game are not made for this mission. Like you will go to a certain point and you'll just see the water ends, like the river ends and it's just land and you're stuck there. And then the timer expires and you fail the contract. The rock climbing mechanics in this game have improved by a lot since the first one and that's a blessing cause trying to climb up anything in Warzone was an actual nightmare. This is a pretty cool quality of life change. That is something they did a good job on. 
I have also seen this complaint from a lot of people and I agree with it that the driving in Warzone 2.0 is much worse than it was in the first Warzone. I don't know why they try to fix something that's not broken, but hey, what do I know? The driving is so clunky, the handling is non-existent. It's like the vehicle, it won't listen to you, it just does whatever it wants to. Also, when you're driving solo, you're in much more danger than when you're just walking. So if there's an open field, I'd rather just run across it than use a car. Because the vehicles are so loud and attract so much attention. And when you're by yourself, you can just get shot out of it in like record time. You can't do anything about it. Yeah, I just uh, ran over a juggernaut, which is basically this area's boss in that armored vehicle. This armored vehicle that the mission gives you is pretty strong, and this wasn't even part of the plan. This just happened spontaneously. And this is why self revives are very, very important when you are playing by yourself. And you can actually carry more than one self revive. There's also a self revive pistol, which is a field upgrade that you can have. So you can carry self revives, you can carry the self revive pistol. And in total, I had three self revives this game, and I had to use all of them by the end of it. I even picked up this contraband mission from this uh, kill juggernaut, which is like a weapon blueprint. I had no intentions of doing that, but that's just a bonus. Uh, I was pretty happy about that. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. For both the cargo missions, water or land, you get chased by this chopper the entire time. It can shoot missiles at you, shoot you, it can down you, and without teammates, the only thing you can do is just dodge and hope that it doesn't blow you up. So that's pretty fun, huh? After that mission, I was done with this mode and I needed to exfil. So the little blue icon of that running man, those are the exfil points on the map. Everyone has to exfil through those points. You go there, call in the chopper and wait until it arrives and spawns the AI to stop you from leaving. You can easily avoid the AI that they send after you by hiding. So just go prone behind something, become a bush, become a wall, become whatever you have to. Just make sure that you're safe until you can successfully exfil. Like I have said this before, the only people that are going to be playing this mode, like just after the first day, I was having a hard time finding matches because number of players had gone down drastically. And only people I can see playing this mode are ones that try to unlock specific guns without having to go through the complicated weapon uh, receiver thingy where you have to unlock certain gun to unlock that other gun uh, or someone really trying to level up weapons in an easy way you cannot unlock camos through this mode by the way I have tried killing AI doesn't give you camos killing players does give you camos and if you want to kill players why play this mode right you can go play BR you can go play multiplayer playing fucking spec ops the normal spec ops is 10 times better than this so I, I, I honestly don't see this mode being sustainable and there you have it that's warzone 2.0's new dmz mode i hope i was able to break it down uh, properly even without game audio i'm sorry about not having game audio but i have never had that happen to me the audio is completely corrupted i recording this mode is really weird because of all the lagginess and the bugs so i generally can't help it it's still a shit show even at the lowest possible graphics so i know it's on, not on my end but the mode itself is unfinished i hope you enjoyed maybe i'll play this some more maybe not we'll see and i'll see y'all in the next one take care